Let's count down with a very special guest. This is Adamski. Well, it's good to finally see you like in real and not only from the videos. Now, there's so many things I want to ask you. We all know you from Killer, but of course, uh, you didn't start from there. What was your first step into music, actually? Um, when... Yeah, that. Yeah, because I You didn't tell me you were going to play that. <laughs> actually, okay, now tell us, because viewers go like, what kind of song is this? This is actually your first record, right? Yeah, I was 11 when I did that. Uh-huh. And what was the meaning behind the song? That we hated babysitters, basically. You, you did it when you were 11 together with your young brother? Yeah, he was five. It was just kind of, you know, we, the punk thing, do-it-yourself records, and like we did that on a little tape recorder this big in my bedroom, uh -huh. like at eight o'clock in the morning while we were waiting for like my mum to get up and make our breakfast. Mm -hmm. It was that kind of vibe. And you, you sent it to a record company and they just released it? Yeah, they didn't even put us in a studio. They just liked the uh, master I sent them, which was a little cassette done on this tape recorder. And what happened with the song? It got to uh, number three in the alternative charts. I was dead chuffed then. And then the money from that, uh, I bought a piano. I got £100 to do the record, mm -hmm. bought a piano. And that was that. <laughs> and from there on, you started just moving into music, so you're, you yeah, were not... Well, I had, to, I had to teach myself to play the piano. And then a couple of years ago, a guy called Jimmy Polo from Chicago taught me how to use a sequencer. And I started playing on the warehouse scene. Yeah, tell me about that, because in 85 you moved to London, and then you really, well, actually a couple of years, couple of years later, you moved into house music. Yeah. Uh, the warehouse scene, tell me about that, the raves and all, because a lot of people mi really missed out on that. Um, it was just a reaction to a lack of good clubs in London, really, and overpriced clubs, and people just wanted to come together and dance, and it was like a revolution in music at the same time as a like revolution with the people. Everyone came together and partied together and made a positive kind of message and everything. So a lot of parties are still basically, warehouse parties are illegal now in Great Britain? Yeah, they're illegal and they've been, they're finished really by the government and the police. And they have ones where people get a license, but it doesn't really have the same vibe. It's all just gone back into the clubs or very small underground parties that quite uh, clean. Were the warehouse parties very, very important to your music? and? Um, well, that's what gave me my break, but I mean, I was making the music before I started going to the parties and uh, I was into the music in a big way and before the clubs were really playing it in London as well. And um, it was in inspiring to play at all those parties. It made me put that into my music, that good thing of all these people having a good time. Well, things are getting really big for you now. I uh, understand you're going to work with the Pet Shop Boys, is that true? No, that's just a rumor put about by record companies. <laughs> I, d I, I met them and, uh -huh. you know, we're, I'm a fan of them and they're a fan of me, but we're not doing anything together. Mm -hmm. They're doing something with KLF, which is really good. And um, you're, you are going to work with Elton John? I've done, I, I've done that already. Oh, how come? I, I cannot see Adamski and Elton John. What, are you, what is ex exactly your job? What? Um, well, I've, I've like, he had the track finished. This is track for uh, the Romanian An Angel Appeal. And I've just like stripped away all his music and built, built his voice onto an Adamski track. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I get on with him, you know, he's a nice guy and it was a laugh. Will the song actually be released as a single? It's on, it's like the B-side of mm. the 12 inch and the 7 inch. So it's like for clubs, and that, you know. Okay, now tell me something about your album. Uh, you actually sung a thing you didn't do before? No, yeah, I got into what singing. What made you decide to do that? Just seemed like a good idea at the time, really. I, you know, just fancied doing it. But um, I was singing before I was doing instrumental stuff anyway, mm. and um, I wanted to put my voice on my music, you know, Seal's a good friend and we did that for a one-off thing, you know, and now I want to put my own voice on my own music, kind of makes sense really. Yeah. 
true. Okay. Now, one, one more question before we get into your favorite video. Where, where do you get all your ideas from? I mean, you have so many sounds, so many different rhythms and things like that. Where, where do you get it all from? Is it under, under the hat or what? <laughs> I don't know, really. I don't know. Just have them. I've had them for years and years. And two years ago, when I could learn how to use a sequencer, I had all these melodies in my head just like trying to get out. And I just had to take them from my brain through my fingers into a keyboard and play them to the people. And with a lot of success, obviously. Hey, looking forward to seeing you on stage in a moment with uh, Space Jungle. Thanks. Uh, now I'd like to know, what's your, uh, what's your favorite video? What's a video you'd like, to, you'd like to see? Vanessa Paradis. Oh, tandem. Yeah, tandem. We've got it queued up, and, and ju let's just watch together. Uh, let's sit back for this one. Hello. I'm Phil Collins, and you're watching Europe's number one rock show, Countdown. <laughs> 